Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to South Wales Ghost Watch. Now, on today's show, we're going to be talking about fortune telling. Okay, and on the show, uh, I've got Martin Hi. with me. And Martin, um, the first question I wanted to ask you, uh, fortune telling, well, can you tell me a bit about the history of uh, fortune telling? We all live in an insecure world. We all like to know what's going to happen to us. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to the beginnings of time, um, humans have always sought to gain reassurance about the fact that will they have children, will the crops grow, um, will I be healthy, will I have a long and healthy life, and um, will I find love, will I find um, fulfilment, mm. those sorts of things. Yeah. Because living in a world of the ancient, uh, the ancient, of the ancient world, things become very, very insecure. So people were trying to understand why bad things and why good things happen. So the first evidence we have, we think, of fortune telling as such, well we think perhaps some of the cave paintings were um, Neanderthal and um, uh, Homo erectus men They're trying to um, paint on the walls the sort of animals they want to catch. Okay. And that by creating those images, they were setting out a world, a view to the universe, this is what I want to do. So um, a, a, a typical North American shaman would dance like a bear. They would make the noises of a bear because that would help the bear that they wanted be found. Going to Babylon, um, people looked up and they saw the sky and they saw the stars and the moon and they thought, that's interesting, we can observe what's going on. Um, perhaps that will tell us what will happen. And if you think about it, logically, the appearance of very large full moons, um, the sea rises more. Uh, so that these celestial bodies do seem to influence uh, what is going to happen. You can perhaps predict weather in that sort of way. Um, so you move on through that. You then go on to Greece and Rome. Uh, in rural societies which are concerned with animals, you often begin to say if you see a particular sort of a bird or a particular sort of um, a, a particular sort of a, a rare, the North American Indians, the, the white buffalo, this will mean good things are coming. So what we're all trying to do is effectively predict what's going to happen and deal with insecurity by reading the future. Um, and the, the idea is you keep the gods happy, you keep the spirits happy, then they will give you good luck. And that goes right the way through to modern age. Today, uh, here, we don't get many barbarian tribes um, sweeping across uh, Neath Abbey. Um, most of our insecurity is largely about our love life or our jobs. Hmm. Uh, because that's the one thing we cannot predict. And uh, so fortune telling is always about finding out what will happen to me Will I be happy? That sort of thing. Okay. So there's a long and ancient history of fortune telling, and there are so many methods of dealing with yeah, it. Yeah, and there's things like astrology, star science, star science, and, and whatever. Yes, and, and people use the stars to. Uh, to That's right. That's right. And, stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. uh, and one has to remember that we're continually discovering new things about the universe. We're discovering planets hmm. beyond Pluto, uh, and uh, we begin to discover all sorts of interesting predictions. I mean, I, I, there's, a, there's a fine prediction that you could. Uh, straightforward say you could you could say I could look at you and I could say Adam I think you have an emotional relationship with your mother you sleep a lot and uh, you enjoy your food now that's just cold reading yes yeah, yeah, yeah. and a lot of fortune telling is probably early psychology yeah you could probably step up the bags and legs or something like that yes that's yeah, right yeah, yeah. but an awful time, lot of it yeah. it's about predicting yeah mm. you, modern science we can't explain why things happen in particular ways but we can look at things that indicate possibilities of things happening into the future. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's a good, uh, good explanation there. Uh, so how do fortune tellers work? A good fortune teller will always be a good psychologist, first of all. A good fortune teller will always be somebody who can observe. And a, fortune, a good fortune teller will always be somebody who has learnt about what is likely to happen. Um, if we use um, fortune tellers who tell you things um, without that background are likely to project their own prejudices and beliefs onto the person. 
Um, I, I always remember being told by a client that uh, her husband had run off with somebody else and you don't see a fortune teller, the fortune teller told the husband, the ex-husband, that he was going to die by electrocution. Oh, I personally that. think that I, I did discover afterwards that the fortune teller, his husband, had run off a few years before and was therefore um, projecting her own anxieties and dislikes on things. The best fortune teller is a good reader of personalities, is objective, is able to read situations and has a respect for different methods of fortune telling. They have to learn their art very carefully and very skillfully. They may use tarot cards, they may use um, playing cards, they uh, may use all sorts of different predictions of people, birds. It's a quite, they may yeah. be good astrologers. So you think, you think these are predictions, so you don't think they can actually see into the future? Do, do, do uh, to be able to see into the future, you have to be a good psychologist and you have to know where you're damaged yourself. Okay. And you have to be able to tune into things, and that's where the exciting bit comes. Because if the whole world is quantum, is a bit of quantum physics, uh, is a quantum mechanical unit, yeah. then of course we can read the future because we tune into that. We're like a, a router tuning in to possibilities, and uh, that's why fortune telling works. Okay. Everybody can um, could do it, could learn to do it to a greater or lesser extent. But there are some particularly okay. uh, interesting people. I mean, I've, I've had people come see me in therapy who are mediums and so on, and I've known who's, who are the genuine ones and who are not. And I always know who's genuine because A, I feel when well, they stop reading me, and B, my grandfather was popped up. Okay. So I always can tell it. And, and telling the future is a very, very delicate and mm. uh, skillful trade. Yes, yeah. That, yeah. Um, uh, that, that needs to be learnt very carefully. Yeah, I mean, people. My, my grandmother yeah. taught me how to look in um, tea leaves when I was uh, eight. Um, and what you're actually doing when you're looking at uh, tea leaves is you're seeing what forms. You know, I have a crystal ball in my office. I always make jokes to my clients that I can read their futures. Um, sometimes it's a very good way that they see their own futures. So it's an art, it's a technique more than a gift then? Uh, it's a technique more yeah. than a gift. There are natural people who are very good at it. Um, and certain people do have... I, I have a very good sixth sense. Um, I always remember some years ago, a lady came to see me and she said, you're not a proper psychologist. So I said, I do assure you I am, madam. She said, no, no, I don't mean that. She said, your gift is that you read what's going to happen, but you dress it up with psychology. And I said, yeah, I probably do do that. Okay. Uh, I sense what's going to happen, oh, so um, okay. or you know that sort of. So you know, remember all these complicated things of reading the future predictions um, are a mixture of many things coming together. Okay. Okay. This any method of reading the cards or reading anything is is a method of using it. It's the software that we use. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, it depends how skillful you are uh, using software and getting used to a particular form. And a certain pers personality traits you have to play with as every, every person has. Yes, that's right. And uh, determining right. what the. That's the, right. The, yeah. That's the, right. Yeah, that. Okay. So what about online fortune tellers? Um, are they just scammers, or do they, do they actually work? Well, that's a very interesting idea. Um, if the universe is truly random. Or if it's um, uh, as a quantum particle, then it may well be that certain online uh, methods of reading cards may be more effective than people trying to read cards. I think one has to be careful with the people who are watching vast sums of money. But I know of a number of very f free um, uh, websites where I am very impressed. Um, how well they read, and it's random, it's computer generated. They have all the different tarot cards, different types of tarot cards, and they have the I Ching, and they have the runes, and they have the, uh, the, the Norse runes, they have the uh, Druidic Ogum, the, uh, the Druidic Ohm, and they seem to work. I've tested it out, and it's just a question of me tuning in. Perhaps I'm being the root of that. Uh, I think if you sort of a lot of the uh, tarot card reading online is on, on the net is very expensive. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I really think nothing beats the actual um, 
a face-to-face -face mm. example of it. Okay, so, so, so they give a false prediction in a way of someone's future. Well, uh, in some cases. Remember, we have free will, and we can change what might happen. The question of fortune telling is being open to the possibilities of the tides that run. Okay, okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Uh, so, what can you tell me about tarot cards? The tarot cards, very interesting, a uh, long history about tarot cards. Um, tarot cards were, I have um, one of the original packs, not the original copy, not an original, the Manciati Tarot, which we think originated uh, somewhere in Italy during the 13th or 14th century. Um, remember, tarot cards are essentially a picture of the collective unconscious, what will happen to us. Uh, largely it's about love, sex and death, um, uh, because all of our concerns in life are about those really, and depending on how many pictures you have, uh, and how many ways of expressing it, um, it's a very challenging method of reading. The idea is that the person who shuffles the cards somehow puts their, an, an element of themselves into there mm -hmm. and which the cards are able to pick it up. Um, okay. Tarot has had a long history, I said since the 13th, 14th century. I mean, um, the basic pack only available after World War II was the Rider Waite Tarot. Um, there are lots of tarot cards before that, but in the last 50 years we have numerous tarot packs. Mm. So the images are, are very powerful. I mean, we live in a society which is getting more and more complex. We would expect the images and the information we want to have um, to the, the, the images and the information we have will get more sophisticated and more complex. So we need tools that reflect it. Just as we move from Windows DOS, yes, we are now at Windows 8, are we? Yes. Yep. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there are eight models. We got the numerous tarot sets, there's different modes and windows that you're using to read what could be happening. Just as uh, Windows can mess it up and clash with software, other software, so that can happen with tarot cards. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. not a precise science. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's an art. I see. Yeah, it's a method. It's like navigation. Yeah. Of possibilities. So the tarot reader can't determine someone's collective conscious. Um, it, it's kind if of. If the tarot reader has a psychic gift, he's able to, or she is able to tune in to the rhythms of the person. Okay. Okay. Uh, and thereby get information from the cards. Um, but it's only as well as the person is willing. As a psychologist, if somebody's going to tell me um, stuff that is a load of nonsense or not share their emotions, mm -hmm. then I am not going to be able to advise them. Yeah. Okay. Somebody who comes to a reading and says, OK, prove to me that you're a psychic, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah is the very worst type of person to work with. Yeah. Because they're not... You know, because they're going to pick, pick holes. They're going to pick holes yeah. in it. Yeah. It's a, you know, it, it's an approximation. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, what are the are there any methods of fortune telling? Yes, there are. Yeah. Um, there's um, one of the things that I frequently do. I use three cards. I use this as a, as a, as a, as a, as a to have insight. Uh, set the pack of tarot cards. You shuffle them. You think of the situation that you are dealing with and you lay down three cards. You have two forces working against one another which produces a third. We call it a dialectical process. Two forces working together produce a third. Right, okay. And that's a very basic pack, a very, very, very basic approach. You can very simply ask for indications of something with one card. You can do a very elaborate, um, uh, there's a thing called the, the Celtic Cross, which can either have 10 uh, cards uh, laid out or 13. You start with one in the middle, which is where you are now, to represent the querent, the person who is asking the question. Then around that you build what has gone, what will come, what is in the person's mind, what is in their unconscious or what is below the surface. 
crossing it, what is the problem? And then you have um, a series of cards going down which lead to the development of the progress of the process of what is going on. Okay, right, yeah. Uh, and you could have three at the end. And there are all sorts of elaborate... I've seen the true traditional one has all 52 cards. Yeah. He uses 52 cards looking at 52 weeks of the year. Um, you can use possibilities to predict what might happen, what are the different futures. Um, and depending on the sort of person you are, the sort of situation you're interested in, it's best to help the person choose a pack okay. to read. Uh, to help them understand what is going on. So there are as many fortune-telling methods as there are people and images. And what I'd say to people is, people who develop their own should be encouraged. Yeah. Because it helps them to learn their own psychic development, their own insight into themselves. So for example, if I want to know what sort of mood I'm in today, I uh, shuffle these cards. And uh, I say, what sort of day have I had? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my girlfriend is very keen on a shamanic pack she has of images from nature. Okay. And uh, we often draw a, an image of a car, of a beast, to see what the wind will be So, let's see what I've had. There we are. Okay, right. I've had, that's the two, that's the two of, um, that's the two of staves. That means I'm looking into the future and thinking, what am I going to do? Yes? Okay, that's yeah? interesting. Very interesting. Uh, so you can, might want to do something like that. Right. You might also want to do... The Chinese have an interesting method of fortune-telling. They have a method called the I Ching. Uh, yeah, I've heard that, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's very simply binary code, as the, uh, as the computer techies will know. It's either um, naught or one. Yes, yes. And you get changing lines and whatever. Yeah. And there are 42 possible hexagrams changing into another 42. And if we say 42 times 42 gives us somewhere in the region of 17, 1800 possibilities. Yes. So you're able to um, understand how that might work. Okay. There are people who read traditional play cards. Um, there are a long history of uh, gypsy... Uh, gypsy, the Roman Egyptians, uh, who have particular methods of using readings. Okay, so, um, tarot cards are one method of using reading. The images on them are somewhat disturbing. As I said, love, sex and death, after all, are probably three of the most disturbing things that's ever happened to us. Mm. And cards like death do not mean somebody's going to die. Yeah. It means that there's going to be the ending of one way. Someone will give you a bad fit in one way or another. Uh, well, um, it depends. The the swords cards, the swords are what we call a subjective um, aspect. They are how we are thinking at the time, and maybe just how we are thinking. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, cups are to do with love. Uh, coins are to do with money. Yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, staves are to do with practical trade and things like that. And then you have the major arcana cards, which are quite interesting as well. Okay. Which we tend to give, if you like, the karmic lessons rather than the average day to day things. Okay. Um, what can you tell me about Romany fortune telling? Romany fortune telling, very interesting. Uh, let's put this into some sort of historical context. The gypsies, the Romanists, were originally a group of people who wandered throughout Europe. They are people who were on the outside of society and they quickly learned to be able to observe and understand. Uh, Romany uh, fortune telling, there's a particular Romany pack uh, which is uh, very jealously guarded. A few people could actually read it. Um, I had once had the privilege of seeing a Romany pack. It's bad manners to touch, by the way, somebody else's pack. It's like touching their underwear. Yeah. without being, if you're not intimately connected with them, uh, you're supposed to respect it. And the Romanists would um, use a particular series of symbols that are probably far more pagan than the conventional uh, right away tarot pack. The Gypsies and the Romanists would also look at all sorts of things with animals and connections like that. Yes. Yeah. So their methods are the ability to observe, to understand, to use all traditional methods 
of reading the future. And you mentioned the stars as well. And the, the stars, stars and whatever. Yeah. And the Roman is uh, that true... There's, there's a very interesting link there with, say, older faiths and pre-Christian, uh, so that they tend to have a different ways. Remember, even in the Christian uh, legends, um, the three magi were astrologers, and I often wonder, what's wrong with astrology if three wise men actually came to the birth of the J.P. Jesus? Mm. That's an interesting one, isn't it? I ask lots of interesting questions. Okay, okay. So, palm reading, uh, what can you tell me about that? Palm reading is a method of observing from the lines of the hand mm. uh, yes. what is going to happen. Uh, yes. The hand you write with is the hand you make of your life. Yeah. And the hand that you don't write with is the hand that you are given. Or it's like the, the starting points. There are various lines. Uh, there are the, there's the life line which tells us how long we will live. Uh, there is the fate line uh, which tells us our chances. Of, there is the heart line about our love life. Mm. The head line about uh, how our minds are. Yes. And different mounts. So this, this is your Venus, fate hand. That this is the hand that you give. Them, and this is yeah, the, yeah, Venus. Uh, that tells you about your sensuality and mm -hmm. how you enjoy things in life. Your each particular uh, mount on the fingers represents a particular thing. The bracelets there. I have four, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm going to keep on smoking and enjoying red wine. Yes. As I think that puts me to at least eighty. Yeah. And that's, that's how many children you have, is that? The number of children you have usually drop from a line uh, just about there. Ah, right. Yeah, as you do significant relationship lines. Yes. Oh. Uh, so it's quite, a, you know, it, for, it's a method of reading possible futures. Okay. Um, you know, this is the old idea. There was an old uh, non-conformist uh, tradition in Wales, putting the key in the Bible and turning the key to read what was going to happen. Uh, there's all sorts of possibilities, like that. fortune telling. In certain societies, uh, they'll look on shells that you find on the beach. They'll look at um, the way uh, you're finding a four-leaf clover. People will read feet. Uh, there's a one culture that looks at ears. Mm. I'm actually, it's one thing I haven't learned anything about. So, <coughs> Fortune telling, so uh, um, palmistry is a very interesting approach. You can only tell a lot about somebody on how when you shake their hands. And the more lines they have, the more complex they are. Um, so it's an early attempt at behavioural science to understand yes. what's going on. And a fortune teller can actually read more if um, someone's palm is crossed with silver, is that, is that right? That was well. That was basically like a payment for um, uh, for the service. I mean, yeah, the yeah. best the best reader that you'll get will be somebody who has a adequate knowledge of psychology and ability to look at palms, read tarot cards, and probably be psychic in as well. Yeah. Um, so the more skills you develop, the more able you are okay. to do that. So would you say you're a skillful uh, palm reader? Uh, I've used many approaches yes, in my yeah, time. Yeah. And um, I've, as I said, from the age of eight, my grandmother showed me pictures, uh, look at tea leaves, and yeah. um, I read lots of palmistry books. Okay. So I can approximate. I'm pretty good at it. Oh, that's but I'm still quite capable of buggering it up at times. <laughs> because we've all got free will and choice. Mm. Uh, remember, it's just giving possibilities. So you don't believe in fate then? No, I don't. No, okay. Fate, that's fate, is, a, fate is something... There is the idea that fate, we are only stuck in fate if we uh, do not become aware of it. Yeah, by understanding what could happen, we become master of our fate. I am the captain of my fate, I am the master of my soul. If we look at the possibilities, we can avoid Rather like it's rather like saying if you drive an Indian car on the road, you of course follow the you, you follow the signs. You are perfectly free not to follow the signs, but you're not going to last very long. Okay, that's that's fair enough. So, what's the link between fortune telling and the world of the supernatural? 
Um, very simply, we are all both dealing with the unknown. Um, fortune telling is a skill that can be learned. It's a skill that uh, helps people understand what may happen. Paranormality is a study of the unknown as well. So the link is very simple. It's a bit like uh, saying that uh, you need to find your way. It's part of learning to map what is going on out there. The, um, they were only as good as our last map. So fortune telling the word of the psychic. Because there are psychics who will be absolutely bloody awful for fortune telling. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are people who are very good at fortune telling who would never admit to being fortune tellers. I see. Yeah. Okay. I usually have a sixth sense myself, but it's usually right most of the yeah. time. Yeah, I think we all have a sense of being good, don't we? To, yeah. a, to a greater or lesser extent. Yeah. But remember, the greatest fortune teller, the greatest predictor of whether we succeed or fail are ourselves. Yes. And if we don't believe we're going to succeed, then we're not going to make it. No. Okay, well, well Martin, thanks very much uh, for coming on the show. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you as all this. And, well, that's all we've got time for uh, this evening, guys. But uh, tune in next week uh, for our next show, where we'll be discussing uh, curses, uh, bad luck, and ill fortune. That should be very interesting, shouldn't it? Indeed. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks very much. Um, have, a, have a nice week. Take care.